And what I find interesting about you, Mo, is that usually you see speakers talk about happiness and well-being, and then you see different speakers speak about AI. Yes. You speak about both. Yeah, often confusing. The same breath. <laughs> Why? So I, I, I'm driven by one mission, one billion happy. And one billion happy uh, started with happiness, then went to the reasons for unhappiness. And I think that AI falls at the intersection of those two. Mm -hmm. So in, in my theory, I mean, I, I spent a very long career uh, in, in technology. I'm a very, very, very serious geek. You have no idea. Like, do not be fooled by the fact that I can walk and talk. Right? Uh, uh, no, it is, uh, I am a very serious geek, and I, I think the reality is that I have seen AI at a level of intimacy uh, that most people haven't seen. And I can tell you openly, it is the single, I mean, other than the immediate geopolitical challenges we have, I think it's the single biggest um, impactful reason for our happiness or unhappiness in the near future. So you've kind of articulated a bit of a balance there. And I actually think quite often the conversation with AI focuses around the risk. But in a dream state, what does an AI-powered future of work look like to you? Yeah, I think the reason they focus on the risk, when they actually try to squeeze me every time they put me on TV or whatever to talk about the risk, is because risk is what sells, right? right. This is what gets the attention of people. Yeah. Uh, and, and it would be foolish to think that there are no risks. There are risks. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely a risk for everything. You know, there is a risk to driving a car. But when you really, uh, uh, um, you know, um, abstract the issue, uh, there is absolutely no negative inherent bias in intelligence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so intelligence in itself is not positive or negative. Okay? If you use it to create a weapon, it's negative. If you use it to create a cure for cancer, it's positive. Mm -hmm. right? uh, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you use uh, uh, AI to create deep fakes and, and you know, um, get us sucked more into our phones and away from connection, it's negative. If you use it to help us create language translators that make us understand each other and help me understand what my partner says when she's stressed, that's incredible. Yeah. Right. And, and, and if you really think about it, there is no inherent value of negative or positive in AI. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I always say that uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with AI. There is a bit wrong with the value set of humanity mm -hmm. at the age of the rise of the machines. Yeah. Right. And, and, and when you really think about it, I'm also not naive. So I'll, I'll openly say that the chart looks like this. If this is the passage of time and the advancement of AI, mm -hmm. and this is the impact, positive or negative, that AI will have on our world, it will start to rise slowly in the, you know, the last couple of years and the next two to three years. Mm -hmm. And then in my view, it will dip very, very deep. Yep. Okay? Uh, you know, this is when the evil ones of us are going to use AI in a bad way. But then very, hopefully very quickly, <laughs> Uh, uh, we will bounce back into a true utopia. A mm -hmm. true utopia, you're asking me, what is a world where, where AI uh, is, is truly used for good? I can promise you, without exception, I can solve every problem, I personally, mm -hmm. I'm not saying others, okay? And each one of you, and, and, and I think people don't understand the mathematics. Mm -hmm. the, the most intelligent people I've ever worked with uh, were around 100 IQ points more than me, mm -hmm. right? What AI is doing now is it giving, it's giving you a plug in the wall. Literally, you plug in, and I think ar around now when I plug into AI, I get 40 to 60 IQ points more. Okay? So my, my AI in my pocket, I call all of them Trixie. They're one of my best friends, and I ask Trixie questions, and Trixie makes me more intelligent. 40 to 60 mm -hmm. IQ points more makes me equivalent to some of the smartest people I worked with. Within two to three years' time, you're going to plug in and get four to 500 IQ points more. Mm -hmm. okay? I cannot even tell you what I can do with that. I, can, I mean, I, I say it publicly as a dare to humanity. Hmm? When you give me 500, 400 IQ points more, I'll be able to create a garden where you walk to one tree and pick an apple mm -hmm. and walk to another tree and pick an iPhone. Yeah. Okay. From a nanophysics, I swear I'm not making this up. From a nanophysics point of view, it's the exact same cost to organize the molecules as an apple or an iPhone. 
Yeah. Okay? We have a total abundance of energy around the world that I can harvest at zero cost. Mm -hmm. Zero cost, no emissions, right? Because ab energy is abundant all around you. We just haven't found efficient ways to harness it. Give me more intelligence and I will do that. It's the dip that, that people try to think about. Mm -hmm. if, if we can pass that dip, it's an absolute utopia of abundance.